All right, so in this question, we're going to take a look at how we can use Desmos, the graphing tool, in order to solve all the answers that are uh, requested here in this problem. So the first thing we need to do is look at what our equation is and understand how we can code that and type that into Desmos. So in this particular question, they give the equation in what's called function notation. So this is a function h, which takes the variable t as input to uh, produce values. So we haven't really seen too much of this. Um, this is what the new a format of equations that they use in physics. Um, but what we're going to do is just rewrite this in terms of what we know in terms of x and y. So the letter t is time. That's our independent variable that maps to all values for x. And then this variable h, t or h bracket t maps to our our vertical axis which is what our y variable is so our our equation that we're going to rewrite in terms of our symbols that we've used more is y is equal to negative 4.9 x squared plus 167.8 x so what we want to do now is take this equation we are going to plug this into Desmos and produce a graph. And then from that graph, we are going to look at answering all the different questions. Okay, so A, B, C, D, um, E, and F. We will be able to figure out what all these values are just from by looking at the graph and using the tool um, to do help us do the calculations. Um, as opposed to working things out manually, um, sketching the graph manually, and then trying to read um, values off the graph. All right, so I'm going to switch over to uh, my graphing tool, and I'm going to clear whatever entries I had there. So the first thing, if you're using the web version of Desmos, and look at the bottom left corner, you will see a little virtual keyboard icon. If you click on that on your browser, it'll bring up the virtual keyboard, um, just like you see here. Um, I'm using the tablet version of it. So the first line of entry there is where we can type in an equation. So we, we know what our equation is going to be and we have to start putting in also the variables. So Desmos by default will just, will use X and Y. Um, you can add other variables in there, um, but to make it simple, we're just gonna use this. So I'm gonna tap the letter Y that you see on the right side and then an equal sign and then start to code in our, our values. So the first thing is negative 4.9x squared. So the negative sign is just the minus. So tap the minus once, and then we're gonna type in four decimal nine, um, and then we need to add the variable x. So x is just beside the y on the left side. I'm gonna press that. Now we need to also make the function as x squared. So that is what the a squared key on the virtual keyboard is about. That just squares the variable immediately um, to its left. So we're just gonna press that once. And you can see the graph is starting to draw. Then we're gonna add the second term. So we hit plus and then do 167.8. And then we're going to also add the x variable to it. At this point, um, that's our equation, and you, you should start to see the graph being drawn. Now, if your graph doesn't look like mine is because of the scale, um, if you click the home icon on the right side, that will reset the scale to maybe what you see by default on your screen. So I'm just gonna zoom, zoom out using the plus and minus keys here. Okay, and you can see that this is almost looks like it's two um, parallel lines. Now that's just because the time scale is um, is quite large and because it's trying to match this scale of the vertical axis. So that's not too useful and we, we don't, it's a little bit difficult for us to work that like that and we don't really see the actual shape of the curve. So to fix that, um, I'm going to press on the gear icon above the equation. So I'm just gonna tap that once and you're gonna see it open up. And there's a, a few set of icons here. Okay, the one we're going to press next is the table. So the table icon is the one that looks, uh, it's, to, it's on the left side, or it's the leftmost icon of the three. It, if we press it, it will open up a data table, which shows us the values that the, the system is plotting in order to generate that curve. Okay, and then just to the left of it, you'll see a magnifying icon. It says magnifying plus. If we click that, it will reset our graph to 
makes make it look a little bit easier to read and understand. Okay, and at this point we can zoom out a little bit and then you can use your mouse to click and drag and slide the majority of the graph into view and then now we see something here that we can work with. So um, what the system is doing is it's plotting points um, and it's showing those points as the five uh, red dots that you see on the screen. These are the default values from negative two to two and then it generates the curve around that. So our very first question is, how high is the flare after four seconds? Well, we know the X value is time. So if we tap on the data table, let's click the last entry, that will activate the data table and then allow me to click the, the blank cell below it. If I put in the number four, it will instantly calculate what the value of that point is. So the answer to A is 592. Okay, and then the other thing you can do is you can always tap the point um, or click on the point on the graph and it will show you the X, Y coordinate pair. So that first number is the seconds and the second number there is the height at that time. Um, question number two is actually a little bit of a harder question um, right, right off the bat. Is they're asking you how long is this flare above a thousand meters um, as it goes up and then as it comes down. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see the number thousand. So you can see where the red line crosses the 1000 mark on the Y axis, there's a certain time there. And then as it comes back to the other side, it crosses below a thousand. So it's flying through the air, climbing and then peaking and then going back down. So the question is, how could we find out what those times are? Well, we can do actually a really accurate job by looking at it and plotting some values on the data table. So I'm gonna click back into the data table and open up another value below. And what we're going to do is just kind of estimate right now where that number is. So these divisions on the X axis, the little squares are two seconds apart. So it looks like it's almost close to not quite eight seconds, but maybe seven and a half. So I'm gonna plug in 7.5 and see that I get a value of 982. So that is almost a thousand, but not quite. So let's just backspace, use the backspace key, which is just above the blue arrow key on the virtual keyboard. And let's put in a six. And we're really, really close at this point, 992. Okay, so if you play with it a little bit and you experiment with a few more numbers, um, if we put in the number nine, you'll see that we hit a thousand pretty much exact. So that is the first time in which we are at a thousand feet or thousand meters. The second number we want to find is where does it come back on the other side? So this is looking like it's 22, 24, 26 and a little bit. So let's try 26.5 and we see that we're almost right at a thousand, but we're just a little bit above. So we have to go a little further in time to get the, the distance a little bit lower. So I'm going to try another number. Let's try like four and we see we're just at a thousand, okay? So let's just see if we can get that exact. So if you experiment a little bit, you'll find that 26.56 is the, um, the time at which it comes back towards a thousand feet and it's going to now go below. So the difference between those two numbers is the time in flight above a thousand feet. Okay, I will summarize this on a uh, separate sheet here where we can write out all the answers. But that would be how you would plot out question two or uh, part B. The second, uh, third one says, what is the maximum uh, time to maximum height? Well, the maximum height on the curve is always the peak. So what's nice on Desmos is if you just click anywhere near the top, it will automatically find that maximum for you. So the maximum time is 17.12 seconds. And then part D, it says, what is the maximum height distance that it goes. Well, that's just the other number. It's 1436. So you get both of those off that one point. And then E says, how long does it take to come back to a zero height? So a zero height means we are crossing back on the X axis on the other side. So if I touch the point right here on the very right, and where just as it hits the X axis, that means the height is now zero but the time at that point is 34.2 seconds. So that's the time of flight of this object for it to leave, blast off, 
hit maximum height and then come back and then hit the zero point again. Okay, so that would be E in terms of our value. And then F and um, is just the domain and range. So the only thing that we need to remember with domain and range is do domain is the vertical values and range is the horizontal values. But in a question like this, you don't want to include things that go below zero because that's physically not possible. So we're only going to take values from 0 to 1436 and from 0 to 34.25. Okay, so I'll summarize that as our range and domain. Okay, so hopefully that is a, a straightforward way of how I typed the question in and showing you a new property of the tool so that you can easily grab as much information as you can on this. So I'm just going to switch back to uh, my note taking tool. I'm going to go to a blank page here and we'll do a little summary of the values here. So our first um, question was um, at time four seconds, what is the height? So we would have to plot that in and I didn't actually reveal that number, but it's actually this one right here. So when X is equal to four, Y is equal to 500, whoops, 592.8 um, meters. Okay. Question B says, what is the time above a thousand uh, meters? Well, the time above uh, 1,000 meters, okay, that is equal to the difference between 26.56 minus 7.69. So that should equal a total of around 18.9 seconds. So that's the time of flight above 1,000. Um, C and D we can do together because we're just looking at max time and height. So max time uh, and max height is just a single value. So the time is 17.1 seconds approximately, and the height is 1436 meters. Um, then E, it says how long to stay in the air. So this is the time to go back to zero. That is the time in the air. Okay, so that's uh, time in air and that's just equal to where it returns at 34.25 and then F to just get our domain and range accurate we said we don't include values to below zero so our domain which is our Y values is going to be all numbers less than or equal to 1436.5 but greater than zero. Okay, we never have a, a height that's below zero. And then our range is our time value. So that is all numbers less than 34.24, but greater than or equal to zero, because we never have a value of less than zero for time. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, explanation for that question and how you do it and how you use the graphing tool with Desmos.